please welcome Julian as he comes. Um, great to be back here in the uh, Investorium Clubhouse, the beautiful venue that it is, the Sydney basement here. Um, I uh, just thought I'd uh, bring our heads into the mining space. We all run around all day. I know I've been suffering from lawyers all day and uh, nice to start thinking about projects again. Uh, little tale from the United States. Uh, <clears throat> I've um, companies I've built. I've built one or two companies that are quite um, frontier sort of opportunities. The, one of them was uh, you may remember was the Nautilus Minerals Company, which has uh, current aspirations and plans and construction to build the, worst, the world's first deep marine uh, copper and zinc mine in the, on the ocean floor in one and a half kilometres of water off Papua New Guinea. Well, many years ago, I wrote a paper, a um, great way to become an expert is to invent a new field. And uh, <laughs> I wrote a paper for the uh, International Seabed Authority on accessing capital for frontier opportunities. And um, lo and behold, this guy, lovely man from a, a, a company called Deep Space Industries, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> he rang, rang me up and said, look, we've been reading your paper and we're all really fascinated by it and I wonder if you'd be an advisor to deep space industries. And I was going, yeah, yeah, what are we mining here? You guessed it, asteroids. Um, so I went over to the United States because I believe in encouraging enterprise and I thought, well, you know, um, how can I resist? You know, if they think my advice is uh, good enough to have, who am I to withhold it? <laughs> and uh, and I was pretty little bit curious, I suppose, because um, kind of makes your mind boggle a bit. It's kind of like you know, sitting in space with no oxygen, having rocks whizzing at you, and calling it mining. Um, so um, I got there and um, went over a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, a really uh, very interesting proposition because uh, what is mining? We think of it in, in, in one context down here um, on Earth, but up there in space, uh, mining is simply using whatever we can get our hands on to build whatever we need to make. So how's that different from down here? What's well, different in that what's available is completely different where you are is, complete, is completely different and what you want to build is completely different, but it's the same thing, right? So it takes $10,000 a kilo to take any old thing at all from the Earth's surface and put it up in orbit, 100 miles up, uh, get it out of what they call the gravity sink. And uh, so they're saying, well, if, it's too, if everything's worth $10,000 a kilo, why don't we just bring some of these, these uh, uh, asteroids that are passing us by, why don't we just sort of bring them in alongside into a geostationary orbit and we can just slowly chew them apart. And you, Some of these things apparently are between uh, up to 50% water. Now when we see an asteroid landing on the Earth, it's been through the baptism of fire, it's been torn apart by the ap atmosphere, raised to ridiculous temperature, mostly uh, any any asteroid uh, that's, that is uh, is smaller than this doesn't survive the re-entry, it just oxidises, even if it's um, nickel iron. So uh, I was learning all this really quickly, thinking, yeah, you know, sure I can become an expert in this before they ask me any questions. And um, so, but they're all really highly qualified guys in, in the team who build satellites, um, who, uh, we had the guy from NASA who built all of the solar panels, um, so incredibly smart guys and a, and a team of brilliant scientists and I sort of started to think about some of the business issues and how we were going to, um, how we were going to make uh, all of that lovely science make money for somebody. And the basic idea is they want to characterise the asteroids, so they go out on missions. Nowadays the satellites, only, without a man, they only need to be sort of this big. They can strap them onto other people's missions, very cheap, put three satellites up for $20 million. They whistle off into space, do a flyby, 
these little ones are called fireflies, and they go past the asteroids, take pictures, and characterise the, the asteroid. I was blown away. They're, they're all just, this is just another day at the office to them. Um, so um, it was really interesting because, um, uh, you know, and then after that they're going to capture parts and then they come up with larger schemes. And, of course, NASA's very interested because it's, a, it's like putting a hardware store out there for them, fuel and materials that they can use to build other things. It's like the selling gold pans on the gold field. Um, anyway, that was the sort of that was the chore, and I was most uh, interested and hung out with these guys and stayed in a very very cheap hotel right next to LAX so that I could be with all the scientists who who um, didn't have a lot of money because uh, I guess because they used to being consultants and now they're out on their own. Uh, but I had the highlight was they said, ah, oh, tomorrow afternoon if you're free. We're going round to Buzz's house to have pizza, and uh, and I went. You mean like you know the the Buzz, not Lightyear, Aldrin, right? And um, sure enough, so uh, had a lovely uh, uh, reward for <laughs> for venturing my effort. Spent a couple of hours with um, the lovely 83-year-old astronaut who um, is uh, still in great shape. I can tell you, he's um, still uh, very active in. Um, seeking female partners and, uh, and, and in chasing wonderful plants. He's got, a, you know, he was really well integrated with what these guys were saying and gave them a lot of good business advice, but it was certainly a, uh, a, a lifetime highlight to unexpectedly be presented with um, meeting Buzz, you know, sat down, we worked through things for a couple of hours, he gave us his ideas and uh, so it really made me rethink uh, what mining was about because frankly, you know, even up there, people are still on this idea that, hey, what if we find big chunks of platinum? And I said, well, it's, not, it's too expensive to bring it down. I mean, if you can't, you only want to find what you can use up there. So what's valuable is only ever what's useful to us, which is um, really, uh, I thought, a really nice uh, redefinition of what's mining and what's valuable and how important location and, and demand is. So. Anyway, a little tale from another world. <laughs>